Hey guys, welcome back to another dev vlog of Treasure Hunters, a casual multiplayer game where you explore a partially, procedurally generated world, find valuable artifacts, and battle your friends with abilities gifted by the gods. Uh, I swear, the description changes every dev vlog. After reviewing the last dev vlog, I found out I hated it. To me, it felt very rushed and too quick paced. It wasn't describing too much of our processes, more of what just happened, which I suppose it was somewhat fine as we were recapping a lot, but there was a lot of interesting processes in which it might have been better to talk about how and why. So with that said, I'll be trying to make future devlogs more calm, focused, casual, and talk in depth about the why and how, not just the what. I'll also try to make sure I don't sound as dead as the last devlog. Since around mid-July, we were quite swamped. Firstly, we thought it would have been a great time for us to take a week break, and we tended to some family masses. We were also busy with moving up, and me and Skogmeister had no internet for nine whole days. I know. So development progress was quite slow, but thankfully we made quite a few major design decisions. First of all, the visuals. I had a meeting with Jimmo Pelpel, and we discussed a few things. We needed new post-processing and visual effects. I am not an artist, yet, so we needed someone who actually had a good idea of what looks good to work in Engine on the post-processing, light mapping and such. However, he actually never worked in Unity before, so we spent a couple of hours teaching him the basics tools for Unity and GitHub. I believe this is very important for any development team, as I analysed our workflow and found that a massive bottleneck, at least for some parts, was the art to engine process. It took too long and too many back and forth and misunderstandings between the art and programming team, so this needed to be mentioned sooner or later. I would recommend any team to have the artist at the very least be responsible to import their assets into the engine, this way the artist can realise what actually happens over the import, and they'll probably quickly understand the issues that arise from it and manage to solve it. Anyway, over a few weeks, Jim Appelvel learned the Unity tools and made the game look completely different. It now has a more saturated and vibrant look, which was what we aimed to create, a fun looking game, whereas before it looked a bit more bleak. Secondly, the art assets were done under the assumption that we had limits on the programming side. As we found out, I have no limits, and I'm absolutely amazing. So we got pretty hyped for redoing some of the art assets. We want it to look less like it was done by a grid-based system, which it totally is, but we want to create the illusion of a free-flowing world. It will be pretty hard, but the art team is pretty damn amazing. Lastly, we wanted to allow some variation, so we also had a discussion on a new map. The map is going to be put in the newest build, coming for the next playtest, but it is a complete prototype, and unfortunately, by the time this video releases, we will have played the new map, so check out the link in the description to join our Discord so you don't miss out on the next playtest. The concept behind it is an abandoned, quarantined city. In respect of 2020, this should make it a completely different experience from the first map, as we'll have actual dimension to it. We'll keep the original map, as people still find it appealing, but I'm really excited for the new map, as we did professional arty stuff, I went to Edinburgh to do some research and celebrate my 18th. Now just a few weeks ago, we recently changed the render pipeline from none to URP. The reason for this was because we couldn't get a transparent material for the player on demand, so Skobmeister changed over for us and did the tedious effort of changing all the materials. So the visuals changed a tiny bit, but thanks to the switch we can now do so much more. I even think we can have a look at shaders for the game. Mmm, water shaders. We have also changed the camera angle and allowed more camera movement. Now it feels pretty good. A few of the things that I fixed was related to the map generation and artifacts. The first thing was that the indestructibles weren't spawning correctly. They appeared to be spawning on one line on the outskirts of the map, which I only found out was an issue after exploring the map in scene view. After a couple hours I found out it was due to this line of code. This single line. This little word. So I changed that and voila, it works as intended. By the way, if you're interested in what procedural system this uses, it is the <coughs> Poisson Disk Sampling. I don't know why I did that in a French accent. I followed this tutorial which does it in 2D space, and then I just adapted the code to work in 3D space. I'll link that tutorial down in the description, I'd highly recommend you check out Sebastian Lug as he makes the most interesting coding adventures. He generally goes into some more advanced topics and I love him for it. As soon as I got that fixed, I discovered that the obstacles were spawning inside the indestructibles. 
This took a really long time to fix as I didn't understand the nature of Raycast. But after doing this, I found out that some of the hits were on top of some trees and not on top of others. Then I had the realization that if the ray starts inside a hitbox, it's not technically hitting it, so therefore it wouldn't stop the spawn of obstacles. So all I needed to do was lift up the spawners and voila. However, now they were spawning on top of the outskirts. <sighs> you can just never win. This will be resolved in the future. I've asked Jim Apelpel to re-import the map with cut-up meshes so we can set a different layer for the outer bounds of the map and the inside temple as there is a tiny little bug where we can sometimes have a massive rock spawn and send players to the void. <laughs> Lastly, there was a very consistent theme of being able to pick up more than one artifact from one. What? Lastly, there was a very consistent theme of- I still don't understand. Lastly, there was a very consistent theme of being able to pick up more than one artifact from one physical artifact, and it was causing players to crash. Me and Scobmeister both tried to solve why this was happening, we spent quite a number of hours on it, and then I had a big brain moment where I realised that the commands would be sent more than once. Revolutionary, I know. I had a temporary storage of artifacts. This temp storage would check if we already had the artifact. If so, we couldn't send another command. This temp storage is pretty much instantaneous, so we could make sure it wouldn't be done twice. So once the command was finished sending, we would then destroy the temporary one, and could safely only have one artifact being picked up. I think this realisation that these commands do take tangible time has caused us to rethink some of the things we do, as checking something, then sending a command, can cause double sends. Um, whereas send something, then check it, I think would work in theory. However, in this case, we just used a temporary storage to check beforehand. However, we still have a variation of the bug to this day. It's more stable and less consistent, but it still exists. We're still trying to find out what it is, and unfortunately we haven't pinned it down completely, but it will have to get fixed before release, as it will render someone unable to play for the remainder of the match, so it's pretty major. There were also so many small changes, just improvements and bug fixes in response to the playtest, such as changing the artifact size, this little funny bug where we had yep. infinite traps, rebalancing <laughs> of abilities and changing some behaviours, a lot of it done thanks to Scobmeister. Skin. Speaking of whom, he is now taking over streaming Skin. for me. I found out yeah, that I don't enjoy streaming game. that much, and it was more hurting my productivity yeah. than helping him. Scobmeister gave it a try, and he really enjoys it. I also checked one of his streams, and he is a complete natural. I really enjoyed listening to him work on the game. If you want to check it out, and I'd actually wholeheartedly recommend you do, not just for the sake of this, you can check out his Switch channel, which I'll link down in the description as well. So in real life, we've also moved up a month ago and got ourselves a flat. You'll have seen it in the last devlog with my awesome cooking video. I've been back at work, Scobmeister recently got a night job, so things have been pretty hectic, and they'll only get more hectic once uni starts. But we've been managing pretty well despite things. Initially, we planned for the project to end at the end of August, so then we wouldn't have to work alongside it with our uni course. However, realistically speaking, it won't happen, so we decided on a new deadline for the end of September, at least for the heavy development of the game. After that, it'll be light development and mostly marketing. This is so we won't spend too much time trying to perfect the project, which personally I have a massive problem of being a perfectionist, which is really bad for programming. If you'd like to know how we manage to be productive and get a lot of work done, mention it in the comments, and I might spend a video describing how we go about our days and weeks, working on the project, working part-time jobs, managing uni, and maybe a bit more about the team. This is my first time kind of creating these series of devlogs, so do mention in the comments anything you want to see. I'd be happy to take the requests and Hopefully, I can make some useful content for the community. So that's it for this devlog. It's quite a packed one, and hopefully I've made it more in line with my vision of it being more calm, informative, and casual. If I have, tell me in the comments, as I would love to know your thoughts on it. I'm always trying to improve on my narration, script writing, and video editing, and kind of the processes so I can make this more faster. Hopefully as I improve, this series will improve to help out people that work on multiplayer games, team projects, or just game dev in general. Anyway, as usual, give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more, 
and I shall see you in the next devlog. Bye. Right, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> we are now all stuck in the same place. You're stuck. Uh, I've been hit, been hit by the fucking booty traps again. <laughs>